Hi everyone, it's time for tea. Everyone, it's me, Miss Cracker, and it's time for High Tea, the show where we spill all the piping hot tea about RuPaul's Drag Race UK season one. Now, to help me out today, we have Tina Burner, a crown-bearing comedy queen. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. And we also have Larry Owens, who has a podcast called What Makes You Sing, and it is available on iTunes. He made sure that I told you that. <laughs> okay, so you guys have seen episode one of season one uh, of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. How do you feel? Uh, I was really excited just to see a new batch of queens, like like we've never seen before. Yeah. You know, it's like time to incorporate a whole new feeling into the legacy, and they were bringing that freshness. It definitely felt like RuPaul's Drag Race 2.0. I mean, personally for me, I was expecting uh, sophistication or like like really eloquent jokes and oh, one-liners. Yeah, language, yeah, yeah. 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 No. Shakespeare living no. there. No, no, yeah. I was expecting. Exactly. I was expecting what we got, like the the Essex. You know what I mean? Like I'll talk <laughs> like this. I'm gonna take a knife out of my wig. You know. Snapchat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I expected it to be really down and gritty. It gave it to me. It said, right. we're not gonna be polished, but we're here for it. Let us talk about the entrance looks because that is where you really get to know what a girl is made of. First up, we have bag <laughs> of chips. This was a personality leading a look. Yeah. I, I'm here more for like the comedic eye of the personality, yeah. but this look, not my favorite. She hit me with the words. We had knockers. Minge, gob sh Immediately, I'm, she's giving me the full UK experience. Next up, gothy Kendall. Her look really gagged me. She has a lot going on. It's futuristic. And then we have three donuts on top of her head. Yeah. She's looking like the most glamorous ring toss I have ever seen. For me, um, she's just, I can compare her to a lot of girls. Right. So she doesn't really stand out to me. Next up for me is Vinegar Strokes. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of that, like, I have a lot of mouth, I have a lot to say, but then when it comes to the execution of a look. And my hair needs moisture, I gotcha. The wig, the wig, uh, the wig could use a couple of bottles yeah. of water. Her definitely. hair was as dry as a biscuit. Yeah, this when I see is you. great going to the bank drag. Next up, we have a queen that I'm gonna bring up because she shocked me several times over. She came prepared with a backstory. This queen is called Scaredy Cat. Her look, bold choices were made. I appreciate a bold choice. It looks kind of like if Skeletor and Trixie Mattel had a baby. Do you know what I mean? Which they did, Katya is doing well. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, the backstory is just crazy. I think she's been doing drag for like six six minutes. Yeah, know? like 11 months. It's real, that's a baby. Girl. I think it was like yeah. nine months, like she's literally Coming to term, yeah. Right. Yeah. She's, she's young. There's something about her. I think she's gonna make good television. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But she also says that she has a girlfriend. Here we are, 10 years plus yeah. into Drag Race, and suddenly, drag is not just for gay boys anymore. There are all kinds of people under the umbrella, and I'm like, Listen, I want you to represent. So. I'm here for it. Listen, yeah. I'm here for anything. Like I said, just bring it. Yeah, yeah. Scaredy Cat says something really important in her opening package intro. She yeah. said, Rue wants me here. And so uh -huh. I think that Scaredy Cat might have some things up her sleeve. It's time for the mini challenge. The mini challenge today really gets me. It's called Off With Her Head. And all the girls have to serve fierceness with their head separated from their mother body. One of the first queens that I like was Davina DeCampo because she was just comfortable and it was one of the first moments in the episode where I felt like someone was just like in their element she came to do what she does all the time. Poised. Next up we have the Vivian who has made herself noteworthy. What did you think of her performance? I see I thought she should have won. Right. So why? Do you know funny. why? It's because like she was really funny. She switched up her accent. She gave me a full taste of what you know Drag Race UK should be. She's really earning that article in front of her name, the Vivian. V. Yeah. V Vivian. V this is what Vivian. V Vivian shows up to do in the mini challenge. Yeah. With V cone on her head. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Next up, we have Gothy Kendall. This one I wasn't really picking up on the comedic frequency. It could have been being you know across the pond, but. Right. Serve me Banji, serve me that, serve me stale toast. <laughs> but this is what I want people to remember about RuPaul. RuPaul loves only two things. Like an excellent scene where everything is going perfect and a 
total disaster. <laughs> and when uh, when Gothi Kandal could not TV. take the direction, yeah. she was living her life. I mean, she that's what like, I want. She tried her five or six different that's suggestions. The, like, it's just like poking a bear. I love it. <laughs> just try it one more time, and they're like, <laughs> get her. You know what? And it's called memorable drag. So that's where we've gotten with her. I was like, well, I will remember I'm remembering her. her. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, she's doing it. Oh. You know, I can pick her out now. Absolutely. Which brings us to the scaredy The cat. winner of the challenge, yeah. and here's my shocked face. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's just there were so many people that do better. I think now she's got a win, and people are like, uh-oh, she's been doing drag for two days, right. and she already has a win. What's wrong with my life? It's going to turn them against him. It's going to get all Game of Thrones up in there, OK? So now it is time for us to talk about the main challenge. There's two runways today. There's the Queen Elizabeth realness, and there's repping your hometown, OK? You know, RuPaul said there's a surprise, and I thought that Shangela Laquipa Wadley would oh, yes. jump out of a fucking Harrods box. So the runways, <laughs> let's first talk about repping your hometown. The one that comes to mind for me, first of all, is bag of chips. Oh. And this one, this one got me, girls. This one got Woo! me. Lord, what was your reaction? I mean, I listen, if I was wearing pearls right now, I'd clutch them because, <laughs> like, it was the Amy Winehouse thing. And look, we all know what happened. And, like, sometimes from like an American standpoint, you know, you look back and sometimes you're a little more sensitive to this. That's why I love that there's a Drag Race UK because they go in. It's character, that's what I've seen so far from Bag of Chips. Yeah. She has personality. She makes me remember her. Not always, you know, the most polished, but she was doing Amy Winehouse, so it's a perfect fit for me. Some Ting Wong. This is exactly what I come to RuPaul's Drag Race for. Yeah. It's conceptual, it's high fashion, yes. it's built for her body type, it's elevated, oh, yeah. it's campy, it's all these things at one time that when she walked into the workroom, I wasn't thinking that I was gonna be a Wong fan, yeah. but I might have been <laughs> Wong! Oh, I saw I that you were right, man. I was like, oh. We're gonna talk about some strokes, everyone. We're gonna talk about <laughs> vinegar strokes. I wasn't aware that she was wearing a the Thames on her body. I thought that this little shape that was on her outfit was a large intestine. Intestine? I, we'll see. Yeah. Was that the wig that she came in with? <gasps> oh my god, that's the wig you are. That's the wig with that that leopard look. Yeah. It is, right? It's the same Oh, here we go. Shame. Treason. You're on RuPaul's Drag Race. I know, listen, we all got it on a budget. Yeah. But then you also said you're in one of the like biggest musicals on the West End. A British like, equity has a minimum. You have enough money. I don't buy it. All right, everyone. It's time to talk about Queen Elizabeth de realness. Mm. Some of these looks were incredible. Blue hydrangea. I love her. <laughs> this is a sweet queen. This look did gag me. Like yeah. when she came out as the coin, how it works very, you know, structured and, and architectural and graphic. Yeah. Nice. My only critique and what I want to see from her is just that last button where you make sure that everything is in place. She has like the makeup no line, idea. which I definitely do, but I never claim to be good with a brush. Like she has that makeup line where it's still over here. I just want to see her bring it in. This is day one. I think there's definitely room for that, but I think that's what the judges will be looking for too. It's just that little boop, all perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now, hello, <laughs> it's time to bring on Mrs. Doubtfire herself, everyone. The Mrs. Doubtfire, I mean the Vivienne. This look. I mean, she had, she had the nose for it. You know oh, what she, I mean? Girl, she has the nose for fashion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. Now, she knows RuPaul, so I'm not sure. Was this just nosepotism that got her in the top? Or? Who knows? I mean, yeah, nobody knows what went on, but you know. <laughs> no, goodness knows. I thought that this outfit was like, it gave a mood, but I was surprised. It was like, People all over the UK, all over the US, worship the queen, and I think there's always room for camp, but I was kind of like, she was looking very Manchester housewife, like early 60s, late 50s, just like, I, I could smell cigarettes. Do you know what I mean? Andrew Garfield called her the Daniel Day-Lewis of drag from this look. I mean, that's a lot. Okay, my left foot. She kind of looks like the witch from Into the Woods and you're waiting for the reveal, but it never happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, come on girl, where are you gonna spin out into that dress and become beautiful? And you're like, nope, just what you look like. Be that as it may, the judges are living for this look. She wins by a nose, just like Nicole Kidman for the hours, and she takes home the crown this week. But where there are tops, there are bottoms, and this week, some girls are gonna fight for their life. We have Gothi Kendall and Vinegar Strokes. These girls were just like, it was all armyography, which you can win but with. It was like, I was like, if you're Bob Fosse, but come yes. on, bitch. Yeah. I need you to put your 
Be on the stage. Right. I need you to right. kick, flip, yep. twirl, stunt, point to your mouth. Give it to me, baby, baby. Come and right get up there, on the like, that you really wanted. I felt they were lip syncing for their rent and not for their life. Yeah. <laughs> All that aside, the winner of the lip sync was Vinegar Strokes. Gothi Kendall had to go home today. Gothi, yeah. she had a lot of personality. She brought back Ornacea. It's just, a, I was, I was, it was someone I wanted to see around the workroom for a few more weeks, so. Oh, see, I disagree. I don't think she had any personality, and at least Vinegar Strokes, um, you know, woke up a little bit. I think we're gonna see a, a huge arc from her, and I think she should be someone to watch out for. All right, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you, go to wait one more thing. I want to quiz you guys on what I call the Queen's English. There was some great UK slang up in this bitch, and I want to see if you guys are on the level. Do you know what these words mean? Now, you have a big one, so I let's like talk it. about this I word. I like it. like them big. What's the word gob? What does that mean? Gob? Yeah. Oh, it's actually a, a bridge version of the gob stopper from Willy Wonka. <laughs> it means mouth. You gob. So gob stopper, gob. I guess it's like a mouth You put plug. it in your mouth, so I was like half yeah. right. Slob on your gob. Like Slob on your knob with gob. your gob. Slob on your knob with your gob. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you, Larry Owens and Tina Burner, for joining me today. I hope you're not wearing too much white because we spilled just that much tea. We want to hear from you. What did you think of this week's premiere? Hit us up on the Twitters, at LogoTV, and use the hashtag DragRaceUK. Be sure to tune in to RuPaul's Drag Race UK, Fridays, 8, 7 central on Logo. And remember to join us again next week for some high tea. Cheerio! Ooh. Mm. Ooh, this is hot. Mm. Mm. Whiskey. Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you. <laughs>